one more. Well, I'm getting a lot of round, resonant, bell-like sweetness in, this, in the nose on this number three. I'm not getting much earth or it's a fairly deep cup but it's not uh, doesn't have that save sweet savory or not much anyhow i guess it's there but it's very clean it's a very clean cup but complex round resonant again a kind of tribute to the blenders to create a cup that's a variation on a tradition Do you get the sort of spice in this one, a kind of maybe cinnamon? Yes, I do. That's a very nice note, I think. I'm getting sort of like a cinnamon on bananas. Oh, it stays sweet in the cup. Yeah, less drop off. Very nice, balanced. As usual, the aromatic notes are less distinct. I, because I sated cinnamon and bananas in the nose, I'm getting them in the cup, but I think if I hadn't thought of that first, <laughs> I wouldn't get them in the cup <laughs> to <laughs> really go look for them. Yeah, the, the mind uh, does, does play tricks on us. There's a kind of a berry, right? There's a berry um, taste yeah. in it, yeah. It went from banana in the smell to, to uh, berry in the, t in the cup, but it's, it might just be the heat. I guess it could be blackberry. Is a good good association. Yeah, which are, we're, we're getting a lot of blackberries right now here. There's a little kind of acidy brightness to this cup. Kind yeah, of a yeah. It's but it's very sweet, kind of a sweet tart. Very nice uh, coherence into the finish. Kind of segues and smoothly into a very nice, balanced, rich finish. This is a very disciplined mo mocha java. <laughs> doesn't have it. <laughs> doesn't have the rowdy quality of the first one, number one. No, and you know I could love them both, but they're, they're uh, I do like having both. <laughs> the finish is is very very clean. It uh, transitions from the cup into the finish so beautifully. Sure and, does. Uh, the finish is so balanced. It doesn't have a lot of aromatic, distinctive aromatic notes, but it's just very satisfying, smooth, with a balance of a little bit of tart and sweet. Uh, there's a little bit of savory uh, depth to it. Lovely. Again, kind of a third variation on the on the style. Stays close to the style, but is, is quite different. The mouthfeel is smooth, but not particularly full, like number one. So now I guess I have to guess at components. It's hard. This cup is so balanced that the, the components, none, neither of the components, or maybe if there's a third coffee, none of the components, really makes itself known because it's in a, any clarity because it's so s complete. So I think the uh, Java component or the Indonesian component could be a washed Sumatra, for example. It's a very clean, balanced, washed coffee, the mocha component. It's, it would really surprise me if it were a mocha. If you would, yeah, if it was a mocha, because it, it's so clean, Yemen, yeah, yeah, and doesn't yeah, have that sort of yeah, quirkiness correct. that I associate mm -hmm. with mochas, but it, it you never know. I mean, <laughs> they're producing some pretty clean <laughs> mochas now. It doesn't have a characteristic Ethiopia character either. You know, I could imagine that this cup could be assembled from, uh, to tell you the truth, from Brazil and. Central Americas, um, mm -hmm. 
I don't think so because it it this has more character. It has a kind of a yeah. twist, a little bit of pungency, a little bit of uh, of sweet savory depth. So, could be you know there are washed Javas. Could be a washed Java if somebody's being very literal about the blend. Could be a very very clean mocha, although I doubt that too. So I think it's a couple of other coffees. I think okay. I'm ready to reveal yes. it to you because I and I think you've got uh, done really well. This is a this is Old Souls uh, Whiskey Dreams, which actually I don't know if you're the one who reviewed it, but I know it's done well. In the in fact, it's right on the cover here in the uh, coffee review. I'm real familiar with it, so that's why I said less. It's a favorite here. This is a 50/50 washed Ethiopian and a semi-washed Sumatra. A lot of times uh, in the old days, they used to call wet hulled coffee semi-washed. Semi-washed, yeah, I'll bet uh, that's what and, it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. a, I, yeah. it could yeah. be a very clean wet hulled Sumatra. Semi-washed is sometimes applied to, in Brazil, it's used for like honey coffees where you remove the, you remove the, uh, the skin and dry the coffee in the fruit pulp. I know that in Sumatra, some people are experimenting with all kinds of, uh, just as they are everywhere in the world, all kinds of processing methods. So I suppose it could be a honey or semi-washed Sumatra. That's plausible because it doesn't have that earth that you usually get. But it could be a, a wet hulled Sumatra that's just very, very clean, very uh, dried decisively and not subject to kind of fits and starts on the way from the producers down to the port. So, it's a very nice coffee. My wife and I just were in Sacramento yesterday, and we did not visit Old Soul, but we have visited the Old Soul, one of the Old Soul cafes, uh, at least a couple of times when we've been in Sacramento. A very impressive uh, roaster very consistent yeah agreed since i tasted this for the first time at a coffee con in san francisco i've been visiting it ever since and it is a, it is very very consistent they've got the blending down now i have a question ken mocha is the port yemen coffees and ethiopian coffees are both shipped out of that port the mocha no. port is i'm is sorry it, to interrupt no but no, mo the, the port of yeah, mocha please. is is silted up. I have photos of it. No, it's, okay. it's just a beach instead of a port now. The new port of mocha, is, I'm not sure they ship much coffee through it. There's a new town that's developed uh, close to the old mocha, which is ruins, really. Picturesque and beautiful ruins. I don't think they ship Ethiopia is on the other side of the Red Sea and the other side of uh, Somalia, so I don't think that Ethiopia is usually shipped through Somalia or or I'm not sure where the uh, the best Ethiopias are probably flown out <laughs> in planes. So uh, I know, but in the in the beginning when the Mocha Java blend was established, were they currently? Were at, at that no, time, were they Ethiopia was not contributing any no, coffee never. to the world at all. Ethiopia was a very uh, admirable kingdom of some kind. Let me just say one more thing about these uh, two components and their histories. Like all coffees, they were colonial coffees. In the case of Java, the Dutch, in a classic European colonialists, they came in, took over, probably killed a lot of people in taking over, and then decided, well, how can we make money? And one way we can make money is growing coffee. In the case of, of mocha or Yemen coffee, Yemen, in a sense, at the time, when it was producing all this coffee in the uh, 1700s, or 1600s, late 1600s, early 1700s. They were a colony of the Ottoman Turks, really. The Ottoman Turks were outsiders. And knowing what I know about Yemen, 
today in Yemen's history, the Ottomans probably never managed to conquer the coffee growing areas of Yemen because those people are tough and the terrain is among the most rugged in the world. And so I'm sure the Ottoman Turks just hung out on the coast and traded for the coffees and, and shipped them out of the port then of Mocha. So they were, they were both kind of colonial coffees. Now, in the okay. case of Java, it, it changed, right? I mean, the, the Dutch kept up. They were colonialists who kept up. The Ottomans disappeared. The British, more or less, the British never took over either. They kind of fussed along the coast of, of Yemen. But the, uh, the interior <laughs> remained controlled by these intense, colorful tribal peoples who continue to, they drink coffee too. They're coffee drinkers and coffee producers. But Ethiopia didn't come into the, to the 20th, until the 20th century as a coffee producer, you know. Ethiopia was another area that remained resistant to European control. It was a kingdom for many years before it was modernized with under Haile Selassie, a famous emperor of Ethiopia. I think. The Italians did their best to turn Ethiopia into a colony because all the Europeans had carved up Africa, but Ethiopia was still there, still a, a possibility for the Italians and Mussolini. So Mussolini thought, decided, well, the Italians, we have to have our own colony. You know, these other British and French have theirs and Germans. So, but I don't think that the Italians never really <laughs> conquered Ethiopia either. I think they sort of took over the cities, but the uh, Addis, but I think that the countryside. <laughs> so when Ethiopia returned to independence after World War II, that's when the coffee business started in Ethiopia. It's a long digression, I know, but you ask for it, you got it. Uh, Thank you. That's what I wanted. You did exactly what I asked. The only follow-up I would have is a comment, perhaps, talking about the original Mocha Java blend. We are indeed talking about Yemen coffees. Right, definitely. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more shows like this.